This brief recording will provide an overview of the new process for verifying BOI, MOI, and EOI read to achieve Dibbles 8 benchmark data. To begin the process, the Office of Accountability and Testing transfers your Dibbles 8 benchmark data to your PSU's testing coordinator. Your testing coordinator can retrieve the files from the secure shell in the 2023 K3 data folder. The Dibbles 8 benchmark data is sent in two separate files. The first file is called the K3 audit file. This file contains the student level data for all students who tested or were expected to be tested with Dibbles 8 for each benchmark window, beginning of year, middle of year, and end of year. The file name will be as displayed on the slide with the three hashtags representing the testing window and the three asterisks representing the PSU code. In this example, the file would be named K3 audit underscore BOI underscore 010. We will now do a quick review of the K3 audit file description. This document was linked in the RTA Dibbles 8 benchmark assessment data verification process document that was attached to the notification email. Many of the column names will be self-explanatory, such as LEA code, last name, and first name. In this section, I would like to point out that collection code represents the benchmark period, and grade represents the grade level in which a student was enrolled in power school on the last day of the benchmark assessment window. In this section, there are several columns that I will elaborate on. Date underscore first contains the first date of the district or school benchmark window as it is recorded in M class. Date underscore last contains the last date of the district or school benchmark window as it is recorded in M class. ENR underscore any contains a yes or no flag that indicates if the student was enrolled on any date during the benchmark window. Test underscore in underscore window contains a flag that indicates whether or not the student was tested within the school's approved benchmark window. The cell will be blank if there was no test found for this student. Admin underscore date is the date on which the student was assessed. Grade underscore mismatch contains a flag that indicates if the grade in which the student is enrolled in power school does not match the grade level of the assessment that was provided. For example, if the student is enrolled in the first grade in power school, but they were assessed using the kindergarten assessment level in M class, there will be a Y in this field. The second file is called the K3 part file. This file can also be retrieved by your testing coordinator from the secure shell in the 2023 K3 data folder. This file contains a summary of data on assessment participation rates, as well as summary data on test records that may have issues. The file name will be as displayed on the slide with the three asterisks representing the PSU code. In this example, the file name is K3 part 010. We will now do a quick review of the K3 part file description. This is also part of the document that was linked in the RTA Dibbles 8 benchmark assessment data verification document. Again, the collection underscore code column represents the benchmark period. Level represents either the LEA or school level data. It is important to note that unlike in the K3 audit file, in the K3 part file, grade represents the grade level of the assessment that was administered to the student rather than the grade level the student is enrolled in power school. The DEN column is the denominator and represents the total number of students that were enrolled in power school at any point during the benchmark window. The NUM column is the numerator and represents the total number of students that were enrolled in power school at any point during the benchmark window and also have an assessment score. The percent column is the percentage of students that were enrolled in power school at any point during the benchmark window who participated in the assessment. 
It is important to note that the participation rate is only calculated to provide PSUs with this information. In the next section of the K3 part file, the column labeled unusable represents the number of unusable scores received from Amplify. The criteria is restrictive for a score to be considered usable. The student must be enrolled during the district or school's benchmark window, and the test's administration date must also be within the school's benchmark window. There are several typical reasons that a student's scores will be flagged as unusable. The no ID match column contains the number of scores in the data that did not match to a student UID or the student UID is missing. The not ENR win column contains the number of test scores for students who were assessed but not enrolled in PowerSchool during the benchmark window. This can happen, for example, if a student enters the school toward the end of the benchmark window, but is not enrolled in PowerSchool until after the benchmark window has closed. The test outside column contains the number of students who were tested outside of the benchmark window. Just like in the K3 audit file, the date first and date last columns contain the first and last dates of the benchmark window that is recorded in M class. If you had students that were tested outside the benchmark window, the admin before column will display how many students were tested before the benchmark window started, and the admin after window will display how many students were tested after the benchmark window ended. Next, we will look at the K3 participation file. The first column represents the reporting year. So for the 22-23 school year, this would be 2023. The collection code represents the test cycle. So it will show either beginning of year, middle of year, or end of year. Each cycle will be added to the participation file as the data becomes available. The next three columns represent if the data is for the school or the district. Column F is the grade of the assessment. For each school, the user should look at columns J through I to verify the number of students in the specific grade as well as the number of students tested or what is expected. The percent participation can also be filtered to look for specific issues. So to turn on the filter, we go to sort and filter and then click filter and you will see an arrow appear beside each of the column headings. You can then use that arrow to sort the data or look for specific instances of the data. Columns J through M and P and Q indicate the number of students with each indicated issue. Uh, the K3 audit file can then be used to identify the particular students listed. So for example, um, column J is unusable records. So school 999303 at grade three had one record that was unusable. Next, we will look at the K3 audit file to see how to determine which student records had issues. The K3 audit file contains student level data. Columns A through D show the year testing cycle in school code. Columns E through K provide the student data from PowerSchool. All students enrolled in kindergarten, first, second, or third grades at any time during the benchmark window are included in this file. If these columns are blank, the assessed student was not enrolled in PowerSchool during the benchmark window. Column O shows students who tested during the window. If this column is blank for a student, the student either didn't test or tested outside the school's window. Columns P through Y provide the student data from the benchmark assessment. Again, if these columns are blank, the student either didn't test or the ID didn't match any of the PowerSchool enrollment data. Column Z contains a Y if the student was accessed on a grade level other than the one indicated in PowerSchool. Again, the filters can be used. So go to sort and filter, click on filter. 
you will see the arrows appear. If you click on that arrow, you can choose to unselect the blanks, and then you will see a list of students who had grade mismatches. Uh, the filter can be used for any of the columns to drill down to the student level data. Next, I will review the data verification process. Before you begin your review of the data, we recommend that you download a copy of the RTA Dibbles 8 Benchmark Assessment Data Verification Process. This was attached to the notification email that you received. We also suggest that you download the PDF version of the 2022-2023 RTA Benchmark Data Review Form to use as a guide while you complete the process. There is a link to this form in the RTA Dibbles 8 Benchmark Assessment Data Verification Process document. Once you've downloaded the 22-23 RTA Benchmark Data Review questions and the review process, you are ready to review the K3 part file. First, compare the number of students enrolled in PowerSchool at any point during the assessment window, which is the denominator in column G with the total number of students assessed in the numerator in column H. And look at the percentage of students assessed in column I. Do these counts look accurate to you? Is this what you expected to see? And does there appear to be any missing data or any other discrepancies? It's important to note that students in the EXTEND standards and students in DLI classrooms who were not assessed with the English version of Dibbles 8 are included in the total number enrolled in PowerSchool at any point during the assessment window and will be reflected in the denominator in column G. Next, look at the number of unusable assessment scores in column J. Were any students' tests flagged as unusable? If yes, refer to the K3 audit file to see. Are there any students with missing or inaccurate IDs in column K? Are there any students who were assessed but not enrolled during the assessment window in column L? Are there any students who were assessed outside the assessment window in column M? If so, please share additional details in the review form. Finally, check to be sure that the benchmark window dates in column N and column O are accurate. Now that you have completed your review, Go to the live 2223 RTA Benchmark Data Review form using the link provided in the RTA Benchmark Data Review process document that you received in the notification email and enter in your responses. If you have identified potential discrepancies in the data, your OEL regional consultant will be contacting you to assist you in resolving these. If you have any questions about this process, please contact your OEL regional consultant for support.